Now we're going to talk about the most broken champions on patch 14.18. I have been playing solo queue for the past two days. The patch hit my server about 9 a.m. Wednesday. So I've had about 15 to 20 games of practice. And uh, I can tell you guys some things that Riot have changed are just completely broken. Now the first thing we need to talk about is fleet footwork. Uh, this rune is disgustingly busted on melee champions. Anybody that can use this rune has just become S tier. Absolutely shot up to S tier. So with this in mind, I will be putting Yasuo in S tier. This champ is very, very broken. Uh, you rush, uh, you know, Vamp Scepter for your Bork. Uh, you get Fleet Footwork. You are immovable object, completely immovable object in lane. You can dash through infinite sustain. Uh, it's just so annoying to play against. Yasuo is completely disgusting right now. If you want to reach your rank goals, uh, lock in Yasuo if there's uh, any knockups on your team and there's there's value for win wall. This is one of the best champions on the patch by far. Yone, same boat. Yone was already kind of a top three, top five mid lane on last patch when Fleet was a very weak rune. Now Fleet is a completely broken rune again. These two champs are just undoubtedly broken. I think Yone is the better blind pick, uh, but Yasuo is the better counter pick because he can abuse some lanes very well with his uh, win wall and and the uh, the huge buffs to the uh, to the E that were made a couple patches back. Now, there's another champion that jumps up in priority because of these two changes, the Shadow Flame buffs. Shadow Flame is a very nice item now. It feels feels quite powerful when I when I pick it, especially if you take Coupe de Gras. Um, you know, it, it has the same threshold as as, uh, as that rune, so it just it feels like you do a lot more damage to low HP players. Um, in combination with Ludens, essentially, if your champion builds Ludens and Shadow Flame, this patch you know, your stonks have skyrocketed. Uh, LeBlanc can also build Storm Surge, one of the few ranged champions that want to build Storm Surge because she's so safe. So it's very, very effective. Like even a full glass cannon build on LeBlanc, you can build either Storm Surge or Shadow Flame, or you can even build both if you're having a very good game. Uh, this champion is very, very strong right now. Also a pretty solid pick into both Yasuo and Yon. Um, it's very hard to get on top of LeBlanc. So I would put LeBlanc up in S tier for sure. Now the next champion we'll look at is Silas. Silas was S tier. Uh, the previous patch, I still believe that Silas is good. Um, nothing's really changed for him. The problem is Silas doesn't benefit from any of these buffs because the new Silas build, you don't really want to build Shadow Flame. You don't want to build Storm Surge on Silas. You want to build stuff that gives you HP, right? That gives you cooldown reduction, uh, ability haste, excuse me, and, uh, and AP. And these items don't give you any HP. So they don't have any scaling for your W. So even though these items are buffed because of all of your AP ratios got gutted on Silas, um, I still don't think this warrants you know, building this in your games, because I've tried building, I've tried Shadow Flame Storm Surge, I one shot someone, and then I got one shot. And that was, you know, that's that. Whereas if you if you build these two items on LeBlanc, you can one shot someone and get away. But on Silas, uh, you don't have the luxury of escaping. I also think Silas into Yasuo into Yon with fleet footwork is just unbearable. Uh, it feels like you take one bad trade on Silas, or even one even trade, and the guy just goes back to full. And then you're, you know, you're stuck at three quarters, repeat, half HP, repeat, you're basing. So I feel like these three matchups are actually quite difficult for Silas. All three of these matchups are quite difficult. So I'm going to be moving Silas down uh, to A tier. He's absolutely a really, really strong champion to play. Certain games, he might be S tier if the enemy team has some great ultimates. Um, but I think in general, even though Silas's win rate might not go down statistically that much, um, if you're in the high MMR brackets, especially, uh, it's just very hard to snowball the game uh, with, with Fleet in the game right now, with, with how, how powerful Fleet is for sustain on melee champions. Next up we'll look at is Aurora. Now Aurora got a few changes in this patch. Uh, these are pretty notable changes. Uh, the jump distance got basically halved. The jump wall forgiveness got a pretty big nerf as well. Now wall forgiveness is basically if you click inside a wall, as long as you click more than halfway through the wall, right? As long as your dash reaches more than halfway, it will still push you out the other side and you could basically do things like, you know, jump over the, the fat red buff wall, even though it looks completely too big to jump over, it would still just let you jump over it and push you over the other side. So uh, it's made it so that it's it's a lot harder to jump from Raptors to mid, for example, with your ultimate. It's a lot harder to do certain walls at, at buffs and at wolf camps. Uh, but I think the other, the other thing that people don't talk about is that because your jump is a lot shorter now, your ulti, your actual circle, comes out way faster. So that means that your opponents actually have way less time to react, you know, to flash away or to dash away or whatever. So in a way, this nerf is actually kind of a buff 
or it's not a buff, but but it actually feels better. If you're already on top of someone, a lot of the time I would just automatically do the max range jump. I'm just pressing the button. I'm just used to it. But now it makes you always do the short jump and the cast is faster and then people can't escape you, um, can't escape your ultimate as easily. So I think in a way this is actually not a bad change. I think it needed a change. It was a bit too OP, a bit too forgiving. Um, and the biggest nerf is probably the duration, right? Down to two seconds. Now you can only bounce twice um, until rank three. You cannot bounce three times. So you can only bounce twice. And for level one, if you try to bounce twice after using your combo, so if you use Q, E, W, and then you try to bounce again, you actually won't be able to do it. So you can only bounce twice rank two onwards, at least from my experience. Maybe that was because I didn't have my passive on. Maybe with the passive move speed, you actually can do two jumps, level level one ulti. But it feels like in these two seconds, if you stand still to cast your spells, you actually won't be able to do the uh, the double jump or it's very, very close. So um, I think this is a significant nerf because this basically means that if you jump in to do your combo, you're kind of stuck next to them. So you have to make sure that you can kill someone. Um, if you do jump forward, uh, we might see uh, certain things like build variations on Aurora, uh, like uh, an earlier Zonias. So you can just ult someone, jump in, do your combo, and then Zonias because you can't jump out. Um, not sure exactly what is going to be the best, but one thing I know is this item is broken on Aurora. This item is actually crazy. Uh, instead of Malignants, please try rushing Ludens. Now, there's not many stats available. Of course, it's only been about a day. Uh, but if you try to rush Ludens on Aurora, it is by far the highest win rate built. Um, it, it's just not even close. Like it, the win rate is so much higher for Ludens versus uh, Malignants because now you don't want to spam your ult off cooldown because your ult is harder to land, right? So you want to ult at the right place at the right time. What you do want is like what you actually want is to kill the wave faster and just move because one thing that hasn't been changed about Aurora is your QE. Your QE still one shots the wave, right? And you can move to other lanes and this just helps you kill the wave so much. Like you just one shot the wave, you never have that problem where you QE and the creeps are left on one HP. That doesn't happen. If you just buy Ludens, no other components, no nothing. With Ludens alone, you will always get every single last hit and every single wave. So I think that even though Aurora Old has been nerfed, this new build with Ludens into Shadow Flame or potentially Ludens into Storm Surge, I haven't practiced it enough to tell you which one's better. You just have to see for yourself, see what feels better. But definitely, instead of Cosmic Drive, you do this like one shot bursty build. You have less cooldowns, uh, less cooldown reduction, sure, but you can one shot waves and your combo does more damage. And, you know, Storm Surge has an insane synergy. It's, Storm Surge is basically Cosmic Drive with more burst. You know, like you, you will always get the 25% max health from your QE on, on someone, right? And you always get that Storm Surge proc and you you can run around and, and kite until you, you get your cooldowns back again. So I think Aurora is absolutely still within S tier for me. I think it's just become a slightly higher, uh, you know, higher skill floor champion. The skill ceiling is still exactly the same. And you really need to be exploring this new build with Ludens Rush into potentially Shadow Flame or potentially Storm Surge if you want to get the most out of Aurora on this patch. Now, Akshan is in the exact same spot he was last patch. Um, he's just average. He has that IE Collector, Lord Dom's build. Uh, shield Bow is a little bit worse on him now because of the Shield Bow ranged modifier nerf. Uh, you can still rush, like, with Send on Akshan. You can still, you know, play with Send, Merc Treads, Akshan against, like, double AP, like Maokai LeBlanc or something. It's it's a viable champ if you want to play him, but he definitely doesn't feel strong. Uh, certainly a shadow of his former self, so we'll put him in B tier. Now, Ari, um, I'm going to shift her up to A tier. I think that this buff to Ari was pretty nice. Um, one thing I will say is that Ari normally goes malignant, so this Ludens change doesn't really doesn't really help her i think the you know the e the e scaling being increased by 15 percent that's great ari's weakness was always that she's not a dps champ she's great at picking she has good wave clear but she really struggles with um consistent damage over time now this doesn't really help her dps this more so helps her burst but you know every uh every every little bit of damage helps uh, when it comes to Ari, and also if you have a think about uh, the pairings, right? Ari Viego, always a very popular pairing. Huge buff for Viego, helps for early skirmishing. Uh, Ari and Zhao, again, a very uh, classic, classic pairing. Um, they complement each other very well. They both want to skirmish. They both want to fight. They have dashes. Another buff, buff jungler that that you could see on your team and be like, oh, Ari has good synergy with my jungler. Let me just lock in Ari. Um, if it's not a super bad matchup for you mid lane. And uh, obviously Jarvan being buffed as well. Um, Ari is good into Jarvan because pretty much nullifies his 
flag combo nullifies his ultimate. Uh, so yeah, I think Ari will come back into the meta as a result of the jungle champion pool shifting. Now the next champion is Corky. Now Corky is just so bad, and they keep nerfing him, and it's just it's just cringe, honestly. I don't think Corky is playable anymore for solo queue. I think he's a very weak champion. I think he's going to lose lane to all of these mages. He takes way too long, uh, way too long to come online. I mean, we're talking about so many champions with Ludens, with this Ludens change. Anybody like Orianna, Syndra, Victor, like any of these mages will just rush Ludens and just stat check you at 2850 gold. Whereas you need 3700 gold to get your Trinity plus tier. If you're not going boots, um, that's 900 gold gap. There's going to be a 900 gold difference where the guy's going to have an item, you're going to have components, and he's going to absolutely fist you in lane. You're going to lose prior every, every wave, you're going to lose grubs, you're going to lose Drake move, you're going to give him a roam. It's just not good, guys. Don't don't, don't play Corky and Solo Q. He's just not good. Next champ, Diana. So the thing about Diana is, I think Diana is actually kind of hidden OP. Um, I'm going to put Diana in AT. I think Diana is a really, really solid answer to a lot of... Um, to a lot of champions mid right now, I think she's a solid uh, she's a solid answer into uh, melee APs like uh, Silas, like Akali. Uh, she can play those lanes very very well. She's a solid answer into Aurora. Very hard for the Aurora to play against Diana because she sticks on her, and you can't really one shot Diana. Diana will walk up to the wave, um, and you can combo her. But her shield is just so big. The base stats on Diana's shield are so big that uh, she just kind of ignores you. Um, and yeah, I think Diana has a few viable builds right now. You can actually do the Galio build, Holo Radiance build on Diana, and then play tank Diana. You go like Holo Radiance, Riftmaker, uh, Nashes, or you can go Holo Radiance, Riftmaker, Jack Show, and you play this sort of tanky Diana that still one-shots the mid wave and moves off each wave. And it's very, very frustrating. And not only that, but this item was, was made for Diana, you know, Storm Search. Diana... Diana was good at the start of the season, same as Nico, when Protobelt, Storm Surge were OP. Protobelt is OP, and Storm Surge is pretty good, pretty good now. I think after the changes, Storm Surge is actually quite a quite a strong item. So, yeah, I think Diana deserves a spot in A tier because in the right matchups, she can be really, really powerful. Now, let's say you're playing Diana against something like Orianna, or Hui, or even Vex, like bully champions. Literally, just run Fleet. Just run Fleet Diana mid. It might sound troll, but the base stats of Fleet healing is so high on top of your base stats of the shield, the W shield on Diana being so high that. You just ignore them. You literally ignore them. You get your one item, whatever it is. You want to go Protobelt, go Protobelt. You want to go Rod of Ages, go Rod of Ages. You want to go Holo Radiance, go that. Any, Literally any AP item that you want. You can go Lich Bane if you want to go one-shot build. You can go Storm Surge. You just build your item and your base stats carry you throughout the lane. And then you just become a Diana. And you just need to play Diana in teamfights correctly and you, you can win the game. So I think this champion is very, very strong right now and uh, overlooked. The only thing I would advise staying away from is don't play Diana into Yasuo Yon. Because they will run fleet and you will not be able to poke them. Your burst will not be able to 100 to 0 them. So I think avoid these matchups, but into any AP champion mid, Diana is very, very powerful. Now another champ we got to talk about is Ryze. Ryze is actually in a really, really good spot right now. I am tempted to put him here because Ryze has... Very good matchups into all these champs. You know, he's sure Yasuo Windwall counters the rise, but you know, if you just if you just wait out his Windwall, your abilities are three second cooldown and, and you, you become eventually very, very tanky and, and very hard for Yasuo to kill. Same thing with Yone, and same thing with Aurora and LeBlanc. It's just Rise just optimizes into defensive stats. His first two items give him shields, healing, HP, mana, which gives him a bigger shield, you know, it's um, he's very, very strong into into all of these S tier champs. So I would put Ryze at the top of A tier. And if you want a new champion to learn, I suggest looking into Ryze. He's very easy to pick up. He's a great neutralizing champ, similar to Galio. But the difference is Galio falls off a cliff very, very quickly in the game. But Ryze only becomes stronger. And at level 16, you know your EQ combo crits for like 1300, 1400, 1500. It's very satisfying. Very, very strong scaling. Um, you know, on par with things like Kassadin. Certainly consider picking up Ryze if you haven't already. He's very strong against all the champions here, really. Now, the next champion is Galio. Now, we had Galio in S tier last patch. I think I will move Galio down to A. I think all these fleet champs are just so annoying to deal with. You just can't deal with the sustain of these Yasuo Yon fleet, you know, uh, fleet builders. And the problem with Galio is you don't really have any good armor items that you want to build, right? It's Holo Radiance is overpowered, but Sunfire Cape actually sucks. So... You know, in some of these matchups, you I, I usually go Leandries on Galio, I'll go Leandries into Riftmaker, into maybe like Azonias, and it feels like I kind of get outscaled. Like, uh, it feels like once I get to side laning and these champs have Bork, Shieldbow, I just don't win. 
I just lose the side lane and I'm forced to group and you can't really engage on Yasuo, on, on Galia. You have to just uh, uh, counter engage or hold the bush and wait for people to walk into you. Same thing against Aurora. Like, yes, Aurora ult gets countered by Galia ult, but Aurora ult is like half the cooldown of Galia ult. So she has one free ult attempt for every, you know, even if you, even if every time you have ult up, you, you counter her ult perfectly, which you also have to be in the right place at the right time for, you know, she always gets that, that second attempt for free. And I find that my teammates int a lot when I play Galio into Aurora. So, um, still a strong champ. Galio definitely an abuser of Holo Radiance. That item's OP. The Leandri's build on Galio is pretty decent. You can also rush, uh, Rocket Bell. That's pretty good as well. Um, so I'll keep him in A tier, but I, I don't think he's, he's sort of an S tier blind pick or anything like that. Just if you have a good enough jungler that you can funnel into and you can bounce your mid prior off of and, and invade or, or dive side lanes or whatever, it's good. But if your jungler is like, you know, Xin Zhao or Javan or Viego, like I would rather play LeBlanc or I would rather play Syndra because, or I would rather even play like Huey because I still can offer that CC without actually sacrificing my own scaling. Like, I can be a solo AP Lissandra, or solo AP Huey, solo AP LeBlanc, set up the gank for my Viego, set up the one-shot, and then still scale into the late game very well, but on Galia, I feel like you, you fall off a cliff. Um, Lissandra was S tier last, last patch. I think I was a bit hasty to put, put her S tier, just because the stats looked very good. Uh, this patch, she is nerfed. Uh, she got a, a pretty significant nerf, 10% on her Q. I still, I still think she's a pretty solid pick into all the S tier champs, right? Lissandra into LeBlanc. Lissandra into Aurora is less good but um Lissandra into Yasuo Lissandra into Yearn is fine matchups again it really comes down to your jungler you know if you're playing Lissandra at the end of the day same thing to Galio you will get outscaled once these champs get QSS your ult is essentially nullified and uh, all you can really do is make space in team fights you're not going to one shot anyone they're going to have magic resist you're just going to uh, stun the front line tank up some damage heal up and hope that your carry jungler like Kindred or Graves or Viego, whatever you had, um, will actually carry the game. So, yeah, Lissandra, solid A tier pick, uh, counter to some lanes, but also you don't want to pick Lissandra to things like Huey or Ori, or you're just going to have a miserable time. Now, the next champion we're going to talk about is Huey. Now, Huey got a huge buff here with the shield increase. Uh, I've played about two games of Huey on live patch, and both times, not even joking, both games were won in jungle skirmishes 2v2, and my jungle lived in one of those games on 70 HP. And that was literally the difference between pre-nerf shield and after nerf shield. Like I shielded the guy and he survived. Instead of using my WE, I used WW, and this 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 buff actually um, uh, won me the game. So I think this is significant, very significant, not just for support way, but also for mid way. Anything around mid two v two three v three is absolutely massive. Another change is Ludens. You know, you can view this as a nerf with ability haste, but I think just the gold cost going down is always nice, and the extra AP helps your breakpoint on the wave. So I think Ludens is a net positive change for Huey. I think you should pretty much always go Ludens over um, Seraphs. I don't think you ever really go Um on Huey, um, especially if you go Presence of Mind. You know, if you're going to play a really spammy lane, you can just take secondary. Uh, I usually go Comet, and then secondary I can take Presence of Mind plus uh, Cut Down or Presence of Mind plus Ability Haste, uh, Legend Haste, whatever it's called. And of course, second item now, um, Shadow Flame is a pretty strong choice as well. Uh, it feels very, very powerful. Uh, I tried one game where I went Shadow Flame second, one game where I went Storm Surge second, and funnily enough, Storm Surge second, I was getting this proc, the Storm Raider proc, from just one Q on Huey. It's actually crazy. So we're playing around Dragon, right? And if you just target the Squishy, the Squishy support, or the Squishy you know, mid, or the Squishy AD, if you land one QW on someone who's isolated, and you've obviously pressed WE in advance, you have your Comet, you have your Scorch, Plus you have your Ludens, right? Literally one ability will do 25% damage minimum to someone, to any squishy. And you instantly get the Storm Surge. And the Storm Surge lasts for two seconds. So you can literally run forward with the move speed and engage with EE. Like engage a massive team fight with EE and people don't expect it because they don't expect you to like get a Shirelius out of nowhere. So this Storm Surge second build on Huey is is actually could be the new meta. Um, it certainly felt very, very good uh, when I tried it. So give it a go in your games. I would say Huey is probably the best the best mid lane mage right now, um, in my opinion, because uh, there's a lot of burst in the game. There's a lot of burst in the game. There's a lot of threats. There's a lot of dive on this patch. And Huey's W is perfect at dealing with that. He's also a champion where even if you die, as long as you get all your spells out, you've sort of done your job. You could have already won the team fight. 
So I think Quay is a really, really solid pick, and you need to experiment with the new builds. Shadow Flame, Storm Surge, Ludens. Um, see what you prefer, see what feels the best, and uh, yeah, definitely a good champion for climbing, I think. Now the next champion we'll be talking about is Vladimir, which is actually a new pick that popped up, and I'm going to put him to A tier. He's very, very powerful with this new build. Um, if you look at the changes, they recently made his pool very, very cheap to cast. Now people haven't caught on to it very quickly. It took them a few patches to catch on to it. But basically the pool is very, very cheap to cast now, and it heals an absolute metric truck ton. Okay, so uh, the point of the build is that you build as much cooldown reduction as you can so that you can cast pool. And you're invulnerable, and you're healing off everyone, and you're AOE damaging everybody in the team fight. So you you kind of like this frontline space maker heal bot. It's it's really silly. Um, it's a little bit different to the old build where you would rush death cap. You do not build death cap in this build. You just build um, CD boots, uh, cosmic drive, uh, rift maker, and you just max out the CDR, max out the healing. Um, and you max your W first, which is very, very interesting. Uh, you can see a few people have been trying it. This is a game that Faker was playing it. This was a remake, but uh, this is a build you can do. There's two variations where you should always take the Ability Haste rune, um, and uh, you can either go full Ability Haste page with Transcendence, Legend Haste, Cut Down, and Airy, or a lot of people also take the Grass page, I think it's up to you which one you want. I feel like the Grass page is a little bit better against range champs because you can take Second Wind, Overgrowth, Demolish just to help yourself get through lane. Well, not Demolish, but I mean, Demolish against range champ is pretty hard to, to proc. It's more of a side laning thing. But uh, yeah, you, the, I think the key part about... I don't know why Shemika has attack speed. I think this is very troll. I think you should always take the Ability Haste rune. But the key is you, you always want to take Transcendence. You always want to take Ability Haste. You always want to max your pool. You always rush CD Boots first base into Cosmic Drive, into Rift Maker, and at that point, your W is literally, you know, 8 second cooldown, and then you spend, uh, how long is it? 2 seconds underwater, right? So it's literally 6 seconds in between your pool casts, and you're untargetable, you can't take damage in pool, and you're healing uh, a lot. So this build's really, really interesting. Have a look at it if you want. Uh, next champ is Oriana. I'm going to put Oriana in ST, I think. Oriana um, absolutely fists all of these lanes. Everything here except for Hui, which is a neutral lane. All of these champions hate playing as Oriana uh, because she is, I mean, LeBlanc maybe less so, but um, she outranges them and she has a shield, so she's hard to all in. And she's just a lane bully. Uh, she's gotten multiple buffs in a row. And of course, Ludens was the go-to item for Oriana that is buffed. Um, Shadow Flame second feels very, very good on Oriana now. You can also go Storm Surge second again. It just feels like the champion is very, very strong. A very safe blind pick. Um, powerful at every stage of the game. Doesn't really have any counters in the meta right now. Very worth learning, I think. Even into the next uh, split of ranked. I think Oriana will be there to stay because uh, just too many buffs in a row. Her, her ratios are very good. The items are good. It makes sense to pick her up if you want to. Uh, Victor. I think Victor has to be put in AT. I don't think we can put Victor in B tier because, look, all the items that Victor builds, again, Victor likes Ludens. Victor can build Shadow Flame. Victor can build Storm Surge. He should be an A tier champ. Uh, would you ever pick Victor when Hui is open or Oriana is open? I don't think so because Hui literally does the same thing Victor does, except he can one shot the wave without the augment, right? Without the hundred stacks. And Hui has a shield that's more AOE. Victor has a one person shield. Hui has a, a guaranteed stun. Victor has not guaranteed stun. So it just feels like you wouldn't pick. Victor, if Hui or Ori are open, they're just better champs. Ori bullies better. Hui is more creative. He has more options in his kit. Uh, but certainly Victor, if you're a, you know, a Victor player, you want to have a blast from the past and just play some Victor with Ludens into Shadow Flame, Ludens into Storm Surge, give it a go. I'm sure he, he's, he's pretty strong in the patch. Cassio, again, I will put into A tier. Cassio is a good champ. She has some good matchups into Rise, into Silas, into Ari. You know, into Yasuo, into Yon, into LeBlanc, it's okay, into Aurora, it's pretty good. Sucks into Hui, though, and really sucks into Ori. Okay, so not a blindable champ. If you pick it in the right matchup, it's SD. If you pick it into the some of these guys, uh, you are potentially in C tier city or B tier. So just pick it at your own risk. If you're good at Cass, absolutely, you can keep playing it in the right spots. Now, the next champion is Jace. Now, Jace is going to stay in B tier, same as last patch for me. I know Jace got a little bit of a buff, and uh, he certainly feels stronger this patch. But my problem is 
all of the junglers that got buffed at 80 junglers. And playing Jace with Viego, Jace with Javan, Jace with Zin, it just doesn't make sense to me. You know, uh, it, it makes the Ninja Tabby value too high. Zonya's is a very gold efficient item for a lot of these mages. And uh, yeah, I just think 80 mids right now are just overrated. You know, people are riding the hype from watching the playoffs of pro play, but they're not recognizing that things like LCK, uh, last chance qualifier for Worlds, it's played on 14-16, guys. We're in, we're not even 14-7, we're in 14-18 now. You know, they're, they're playing two patches behind. So just because they pick 80 carries mid and they pick, um, you know, AP jungle pairings doesn't mean that's what's the best for you to play in your solo key games, right? Because one, the game is different, and also there is less coordination, less communication. So, um, you know, for me, Jace is just a, a B-tier champ, right spot, A-tier, and... Uh, I don't see a reason to pick AD mids right now. Uh, unless you're playing an AD mid with fleet footwork, which is broken, uh, just don't pick AD mids. That's that's all it is. Pick AP mids or fleet footwork chaps. <laughs> that's the meta. Next, Lux. Um, I'll put Lux in A tier. Again, Lux, happy with these changes. Shadow Flame, Ludens, Storm Surge, great. Um, pick her up if you want to. Uh, Katarina, again, A tier, one trick champ. Happy with the Shadow Flame change, no doubt. Um... Maybe Fleet Footwork Katarina becomes a thing. Uh, I can certainly see that being a solution for her weak laning. Uh, if she needs a little bit of uh, sustain and way to get to her items, absolutely could be a new build being cooked up, but I'll leave that to the cat experts to decide. Malzahar, Malzahar a little bit too linear, but I will say, uh, again, Ludens and Shadow Flame. Although I think Malzahar likes Malignance, right? Maybe this could be good for his wave clear breakpoints. I'm not sure. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. If this actually, this patch increases Malzahar's win rate by a lot because these changes matter, then yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll raise a white flag, but I don't think this helps Malzahar too much. I mean, the dot damage goes down. Malzahar likes dot damage, but I think overall the item strength went up. So I think it was a buff for Shadow Flame for Malzahar, but it's not as big of a buff as it is for other champions. Let's move on to Lucian. Lucian... I'm going to put him in B tier, guys. I think Lucian's power was always to bully the lane. And uh, good luck bullying Fleet Footwork Yasuo Yon. Good luck bullying Oriana. Good luck bullying Huey. You know, um, I think that there's just too many strong laners. It doesn't make sense to pick Lucian. You might as well pick the champs that can abuse the AP items that have been buffed repeatedly or uh, abuse the new Fleet Footwork rune. Nefiri. Nefiri is a strong champ. Nefiri is one of the few champs who can actually kill Fleet Footwork Yasuo Yon because her damage is so overwhelming. Um, you know, she's a pretty solid pick into the squishy uh, squishy mages if you get ahead, if you manage to get a room off or a successful gank. So Nefiri, a, a tier counter pick for me. I think she's in a pretty solid spot. Vex, a tier champ. Vex, again, is really good right now. Vex is really good and really bad. Vex is like Cassio. She's really good and really bad. She's very good into Aurora, very good into LeBlanc, pretty good into Yasuo Yon, actually very good into Yon. Pretty good into Yasuo, very bad into Hui, very bad into Ori. You know, very bad into champions at Outranger, very bad into Victor. But I would put I would put Vex up here. I think both of these changes are very good for Vex. I think the Shadow Flame change specifically is really, really good. The Ludens change is also really, really good. Your Q always one shots the wave now. There's no like point where if you're like O2 or if you're a little bit behind and you have only Ludens and you need an extra amp tome to one shot the wave, none of that. On Vex now, your Q will always one shot the back wave. Your EQ will uh, start one shotting the melees very, very quickly as well. Um, so I think Vex is in a great spot. Um, definitely play her an absolute fantastic solo key champion. Nico. <sighs> the thing is, Nico's win rate is not looking good on the patch. It's very small sample size, but I mean, Nico was broken when Protobel and Storm Surge were broken. Storm Surge has been buffed. Protobel has been buffed. Surely this is enough to bring Nico back into the meta. Surely Nico is a viable champ. You know, I, and I say this with beta breath, I'm not sure. This is probably the biggest gamble of this whole tier list. We, we probably won't see enough stats to justify this, but I think Nico is a viable pick. I, I genuinely think so. I think that the items, all the good items, are Nico's items, naturally, what, what she wants to build. So it, it wouldn't make sense that in this meta, Nico would be bad, especially considering Nico is a great anti-melee champ as well. And these melee champs are, are dominating right now in, in terms of solo queue. So yeah, I'd put Nico in ATS, solid, solid, solid counter pick to the melee, solid, you know, laner into the range champs as well she can certainly it's certainly way better to play nico into ori rather than playing you know cassie into ori so i put her in a tier a strong champ worth worth giving it a, a try if you haven't already 
Now the next champion is Kiana. I think Kiana's biggest weakness is that her first couple of levels are really, really bad. And uh, your jungler basically always has to give crab if you're playing Kiana and you lose push and you're chunked out. Um, or you're going to you know, go down 5, 6 CS on the first couple of waves. And I feel like League of Legends is in the kind of state where no meta champion will ever be like, oh, I'm loading into Summoner's Rift knowing that I'm only going to get 10 out of 19 CS in the first three waves. you know. But, but Kassadin is like that, and Kiana is like that. Those are the only two mid champs that I can think of that are just like completely dog water the first couple of waves. So I'm going to put Kiana in B tier. I think she can be in A tier if she's uh, uh, picked correctly in the right spots. Uh, Kassadin, I'm going to be moving Kassadin up to B tier. I think Kassadin benefits a lot from the uh, fleet footwork changes. I think that fleet on Kassadin will help him survive some lanes, but again, good luck playing Kassadin to you. Yasuo Yon type things, and uh, you can still get harassed very hard by some of the bullies like Huey and Ori. Uh, but certainly, I think he has his his spots. You know, he's very very nice into LeBlanc. Uh, just survives the LeBlanc burst, and later on just completely outscales her. Very nice into Aurora as well. Uh, but takes a little bit too long to come online, so I can't really rate him any higher. Tristana, C tier. I'm sorry. Luckily, to all you Tristana lovers out there, Freak released the preview of the PBE, and he said that Tristana is going through a, a massive rework at the start of next season. Or rather, at the start of uh, Split 3, Tristana mid might might be up here again. We won't know until it happens, of course, but I'm hopeful. I'm glad that they've noticed that Tristana is just in the bin and uh, and needs a little bit of love. Uh, but this patch, please, don't play Tristana. It's not good. Uh, Trinibir, another champion that, that I think very positively affected by the fleet footwork uh, change. I think Trindamir can survive these lanes like Huey Ori, and you can play him with Demolish and fleet footwork and second wind and you just get the occasional demolish proc and you you know you end up going to the side lane and you just become a side laning trindamir and you really just become a menace so i think trindamir is actually in a pretty decent spot ravenous hydra is still an op item uh fleet footwork is an op rune and uh you just have infinite sustain in lane now would i ever pick trindamir over yon i don't think so because yon can actually team fight you know yon is more independent yon can help in skirmishes because he has cc would i pick him over yasuo again i wouldn't because yasuo has more Mobility, yes, so you can dash through the wave, go in, and then dash through the wave and back out. Whereas Trindamir, you dash in for a trade, jungle comes out, bye-bye. First couple of levels. So, um, but yeah, I think uh, certainly Trindamir mid is back uh, on this patch. Definitely back, definitely uh, more more annoying than ever in terms of sustain. Uh, Swain, B tier, just items aren't that good and outranged by most mages. Doesn't do enough damage in lane to actually force the fleet footwork champs out. So just a B tier champ. I think if you're good at Swain, you can absolutely pilot him. Now Twisted Fate is an interesting one. I've tried playing Twisted Fate with uh, Ludens Storm Surge on this new patch. So I've tried building both of these items. I don't think Shadow Flame is particularly good, um, but I've tried with uh, with Storm Surge Ludens on the new patch. It felt okay. It felt very strong in terms of I was able to get the proc, uh, the Storm Surge proc. I was playing with Comet, so I was playing Comet Storm Surge Ludens. Um, I would gold card someone, land my Q and I would always get the Storm Raider proc. Now the problem is, my W cooldown was so high that after I get the Storm Raider proc, I'm like running away with the move speed, and then the move speed ends, and my card is still not back up. So I can't use the move speed to like get my second rotation off, you know? It's it's only like, you sort of, you walk in with the W, you stun someone, you Q, and then you get out of there with the move speed. So last patch, I thought that this might be a really nice combo, the sort of Storm Surge on TF, but... I take it back. I don't think the Storm Surge is that great, but I do think TF is an OP champ at solo queue because you can ult the map. So I'm going to put TF in. Oh, actually, all these matchups are so bad for TF. Never mind. I'm putting TF in B tier. Uh, these matchups are all unplayable. <laughs> Yasuo TF, unplayable. LeBlanc is fine, but Aurora TF is not very pleasant. Huey TF is not very pleasant. Ori TF is... Ugh, it's just disgusting so i'm actually gonna put tf and bt i don't think tf is in a great spot uh, his win rate might say otherwise um and and certainly in some of these other lanes you can have a very good time playing tf but not against the metal not against the metal boys so uh, i'm gonna put tf and bt i think tf needs a bit more love from right i think that these uh the, the glass cannon build is not good in him i think that you know you can go like shirelia storm surge and go full move speed but again it feels like you're just playing a support champ mid it's Bring back ADTF or bring back Rod of Ages, tanky, you ult into five people, you Zonya to engage, bring that style back and uh, I will rate TF higher, but not today. Talon, um, still very OP, by the way. Talon can be here. Um, he is weak into LeBlanc, he's not great into Aurora, but certainly I think with the new Q changes, Talon is, is up here. Talon is very, very strong. Vega, uh, Vega doesn't really benefit from the items, unfortunately, hasn't gotten much love recently, you know. 
maybe Ludens is okay on him, but I think Seraphs has always been the build. And uh, Storm Surge, yeah, this is a nice change for Vega, sure. You get the move speed uh, from hitting people, but nah, don't think it's good. I think Vega wants uh, ability haste, and none of these changes help champions that like ability haste. Seraphine, somebody complained I didn't put her on the list. Look, I think Seraphine should realistically be B tier because she is too linear to be played mid, in my opinion. She's too squishy to walk into bushes. She's too mobile um, compared to a lot of these other champions, uh, but she can be good. Like uh, I'll put her in B tier, but she can certainly be A tier in, in a decent matchup. And by decent matchup, I mean against a mage, you're going to have a good time. You know, against some of the low range uh, mids, you're also going to have a good time against even like a Talon or uh, Silas. You just clear the wave. You're Diana. You're just going to clear the wave and get prior. It's it's going to be fine. But you know, playing Seraphine into Yasuo, mm, not a huge fan. Seraphine to Yone, yeah, you're going to win lane, but this champ can catch you on side lanes and just one shot you from full. You can also dodge your ult with his ult. It's buffer it with Z. It's not very fun. Blanc as well. I mean. Yeah, if you're having a good game, LeBlanc can't kill you, but as soon as LeBlanc gets ahead and you're playing Seraphim mid, woo, you're going to get chunked out a lot. So it has to be B tier. I'm sorry, my Seraphim lovers, but can't rate it any higher. Now, the next champion we'll look at is Syndra. Now, I would normally put Syndra on the same tier as Ori Hui, uh, but in this patch, I simply can't because I feel like early game, Syndra just doesn't have the impact that Ori, Hui, and Aurora can have against the melee matchups, against the fleet footwork abusers. Uh, and... Therefore, you're just giving them a free lane. Sure, you're getting a free lane yourself, and you're playing Syndra, but so are these champs. And you know, at the end of the day, if you're going to play a mage that has CC, has wave clear, and is safe, and is good scaling, blindable, why pick Syndra when you can pick Ori Hui and you can dominate the lane? Or why pick Syndra and just go even when you can pick these champs and actually win? So that's my only logic. I think outside of that, Syndra definitely benefited from both of these changes. Um, if I had an A plus tier, I would put Syndra in A plus. She got buffed. Her ultimate got a small buff the other patch, and yeah, all of these are pretty great on Syndra. Certainly pick her up if you um, if you're into that kind of playstyle. Echo is pretty happy with the changes as well. I don't know if I put Echo into A tier because these matchups are just uh, very not good. Yeah, I think Echo is in B tier. Echo into Ori is a little sketchy because she can bully you out. Echo into LeBlanc is quite sketchy. Yo and Yasuo are not good. Uh, certainly, you know, I think these items could be good for Echo, but you do want to build Lichbane, so I'm not sure where you could actually fit these into your build. So I think Echo mid is very niche and more so good against the weaker laners that are AP champs or into other AP melee mids. I think Echo is entirely viable, uh, but not into some of this jazz. Next, Talia. Uh, Talia, uh, absolutely at the top of A tier, kind of the same. Uh, spot of Syndra. Talia hasn't received buffs. She's only received Nurse as a champion. But these these items are you know very viable in her. Ludens. Talia's happy to build Ludens. Storm Surge, Shadow Flame. She can definitely build these items. She can abuse the changes. But I think that the champion itself has not received love, unlike Hui and unlike Ori, who have been buffed repeatedly. So I can't really put Talia any higher. She's very viable if you want to give her a go. Fizz, A tier again. A tier counter pick. Loves a Shadow Flame occasionally. Storm Surge occasionally. Uh, fits in a Lich Bane there somewhere. Doesn't really need a mana item, but I've seen Fizz's go Ludens as well. Fizz has a place uh, as a counter pick in certain matchups against certain AP champs, and you know he can flip the lane with Ignite against uh, you know Fizz, Yasuo, uh, even Trindamir. You can if you're skilled enough at Fizz, you can you can absolutely pull it off. So Belkos, B tier. I don't really know if. I guess these items are pretty good for Velkos as well, but you just don't want to play Velkos into some of the Assassin matchups, which are currently dominating the meta, especially Akali as well. When we get to it, I guess we could do that next. Uh, Akali, I would put her into S tier, but for some reason, from the limited stats that I've seen, people are having a better time with Electrocute and Akali. Even though Fleet is busted, for whatever reason, Electrocute is still the higher win rate rune. And I think that if your champion doesn't synergize well enough with Fleet, then you shouldn't be here as a melee. You know, the same way that Silas is not here, even though Silas is a very good champ and he has some very good items, he does not abuse the most broken rune in the game right now, which is Fleet Footwork on melee champs. It's just not the best rune. You can play him. You can play Fleet Footwork Silas. I've tried. I've lost. So that's why I think Akali is kind of on the same level as Silas. I think uh, the AP mids, the AP melee mids are just worse than the AD melee mids because they, uh, they don't auto nearly as much as these champs do. 
Um, they don't dash nearly as much as these champs do. They don't regenerate the fleet fast enough. I guess that's what's impacting the win rate negatively. That's why Akali's fleet win, win rate is, is worse than her electrocute one. I'm not too sure, but yeah, Akali, very, very strong um, with fleet, without fleet. You know, Shadow Flame, she loves this item. Storm Surge could be very good as well. Um, she's in a good spot. If you want to play Akali, A tier, A tier pick, doesn't have many counters, ban LeBlanc, and you'll be sweet. Just pick Akali. Um, Annie, um, Annie probably B tier for me. Uh, again, can build some of these items, but don't think the champ is in the best spot at the moment. Azir, oh my friends, Azir is, he's gone. Azir is gone. It's world, so you know what that means. In brackets, let's kill Azir. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is such a big nerf. I, I don't know what to tell you guys. This, I have just played one game of Azir on this patch. I've played Azir into Huey, and I hit him with my W auto attack into the Q, into another W auto attack. He lost about 100 health. I'm not joking. He lost 100 health. Huey hit me with W, w and Q. He just hit me with auto attack with WE, then he hit me with a Q, and then he hit me with another auto attack with a WE. I lost 300 health. I've landed everything it could possibly land on Azir level 2, and Huey landed everything he could possibly land, and the trade was 100 damage for 300 damage. I have been outskilled, but not by my opponent, but by Riot Freak, the design lead of League of Legends. So if you're an Azir player and you want to be miserable, play him this patch. If you don't want to be miserable, then maybe it's time to take a break for two weeks and just come back when they buff him after Worlds, because it is just, and I can't stress it enough, it is miserable playing Azir right now at every stage of the game. Until you get to your, you know, Nash's, Leandri's, Death Cap, until you get to the late game, if you ever get there without your Nexus exploding, it's just miserable. It's absolute misery uh, on Azir. Uh, not a huge fan. And the next champion is Aesol. I think he's pretty strong uh, in the right place. Certainly weak against some of these bad boys that can run you down. Um, not pleasant playing into LeBlanc, but you know, against things like Aurora, you can chuck your thing down and just kill the wave. Way you can kill the wave, or you can just kill the wave. I think against the, the mages, the Syndras, you know, you're, you're fine just picking Aesol and scaling up. If that's the type of thing you want to do, maybe if you're an Azir player and you're just very sad about Azir being bad right now, maybe it's time to start playing some Aesol because it's a pretty similar playstyle, but it's a lot more fault proof. You can't really be bullied because you can stop the wave from hitting your tower and uh, you always have that threat of uh, getting your ulti threshold, getting the massive ring all around the map. So yeah, I think Aesol is entirely viable as a counter pick if you wanna, or as a uh, pick into the non uh, volatile mid laners. Xerath, I'm gonna actually put Xerath into A tier. I think Xerath is, again, uh, the same thing with Nico. I think these are the two bold predictions for me. I think Xerath got buffed with his ultimate, getting many, many more charges. And we might actually see some Xerath at Worlds because these changes are just direct buffs to Xerath. Every single Ludens is a Xerath staple. Xerath always goes Ludens. Um, now, of course, ability haste going down is a little bit sad, but this will hopefully help him clear the wave better. You get the item a little bit earlier. And again, you know, Shadow Flame, just a straight up buff for Xerath. Storm Surge, potentially a buff for Xerath. Although I don't think you should ever go Storm Surge on Xerath. I think that this uh, passive movement speed is kind of a wasted stat that you're paying for. You don't really want movement speed on that champ, but you know, potentially Ludens into Shadow Flame on Xerath could be the new build, abusing the buffs. And uh, yeah, I think in the right spot against the short range mages, not against assassins, against the short range mages, or against kind of the long range mages where you'll just have an even matchup into some of these. You can absolutely play Xerath and get away with it in the meta right now. Zoe is also a uh, Ludens companion fan. She's also a Shadowflame fan. She's also a Storm Surge fan. So could we really say that Zoe is B tier? I feel like Zoe is entirely viable and people just forgot about her. Why? Why is Zoe bad? Why can Zoe be bad? If 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 her if all of her items just got buffed, how can you put Zoe into B tier? I, I don't think that's possible. I don't think that's fair to put Zoe into B tier if all of her items have been buffed, right? It just it just feels a little bit wrong to do that, but maybe she's just in a weak spot right now. Maybe she just needs a buff on the actual champion. I'm not particularly sure why Zoe's win rate is so low. Maybe we just have to put her in B tier because her win rate is uh, not that good, but yeah, I mean, I just, I don't see why Zoe can't be a good champ, but the stats right now say that she's not. So I will uh, trust my eyes instead of my heart in this one. We'll leave Zoe in B tier. 
The next champion is Ziggs. Uh, again, I got a complaint last time that I didn't uh, include Ziggs on the list. I think Ziggs is a viable pick mid. Uh, if you want to play him, I don't think you should because he struggles against certain assassins. And I think that if you're going to play a uh, burst wave clear mage in mid, here's one that's better. Here's one that's better. You know, here's one that's better. Here's one that's better. Uh, but if you do want to play Ziggs, I think he has his place. And just like Zoe, he can be very, very powerful. Uh, the items, all the buffed items are all very, very good on Ziggs. You got a small nerf, but it's not a big deal for mid lane. So if you do want to play mid lane Ziggs, by all means, could be AT in the right spot. Same as Zoe. Go ahead and pick it and don't feel like your champion's weak because it's not. Now the next champion is Smolder. Now I think Smolder's become a lot weaker this patch. Triple nerf, wave clear nerf, damage nerf on his W, damage nerf on his Q, lower base HP. This means that when you're playing against the strong laners in mid and even i would say that things like yasuo have become a very strong laner with the infinite sustain and the max dashing on the wave you're really not going to have a good time okay you're going to drop mid prior and you're not going to be a champion for quite a while and you're going to be a burden to your team if your team could survive without you and you can get your 225 stacks great you're still the same old small that you were and you'll carry the game but you'll find that a lot more games on patch 14.18 feel unwinnable when you pick weak laners because of the domination of the one item spike on mages and the infinite sustain for fleet on melee champs. The next champion is Anivia. I'm going to put Anivia in A tier. I think this champion is always very, very strong whenever I see it. I think it just takes a lot of mastery. Um, I think that the items are pretty good for it. And uh, it's a high kind of uh, low skill floor, high skill ceiling champ. Uh, but again, it's a little bit unreliable because her main CC ability can be flashed and her ulti costs quite a lot of mana. It also forces you to be within range, which makes your movement predictable. So there's a, there's a few issues with her kit. I think outside of that, you know, um, she's a pretty strong champ if you do main her. Zed, again, uh, same as last patch, just a strong counter pick. I think his items are good. I think the champ's in a good spot. I think he can get bullied by certain laners. I think he can get outscaled by some of the bruises. And he can't really use his WEQ to harass the fleet champs out of lane anymore. But you can certainly get your items yourself and... Press your outplay buttons, and if you're better, you'll win when you pick Z. And the next champ is Zeri mid. I think Zeri is in a okay spot, but again, uh, with all the changes to mages, the buffs to mages, the buffs to mage items, the buff to uh, melee fleet footwork, where you can't really win lane it so hard against Yasuo Yon anymore, and then Yasuo Yon get their items, and then you're Zeri, and you can get one shot. Just, just don't play AD carries mid, guys. The, 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 that phase is over, okay? Uh, even if you see the pros still playing it, it's because they're playing on the old patch. You shouldn't do it, okay? Your goal is to get the best rank you can. I mean, there's what, barely two weeks, less than two weeks, 12 days left till the end of the season. You guys need to be abusing the strongest champions possible. So do yourself a favor, pick what's an S tier, pick what's an A tier, get really good at it over the next couple of days so that you have the best chance possible of reaching your rank goals before the season ends. That's about it for the video. It's about it for the tier list. Now I've got a massive Silas guide similar to my Tristana one that I made back in the day when I first started my channel. That's coming out later this week. Uh, so if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. If you're not a Silas player yet, I promise I will convert you with this guide. You will enjoy him as much as I do. You will find as much success as I do in solo queue when playing Silas. So uh, stay tuned and uh, yeah, just have a great day.